In the airplane seat ahead of Benny and Henry, a man put on a white cowboy hat. Does that mean we're about to land? Six-year-old Benny asked his big brother. We still don't know where we're going, said Jesse, age 12. She sat across the aisle from her brothers, and next to her was her younger sister, Violet. It's a mystery, said Violet. She couldn't believe they were about to land, and their grandfather still hadn't told them where they were going. The plane began to descend, and Violet reached for her grandfather's hand. I'm not afraid, she whispered. I know, grandfather said. He gave her hand a soft squeeze. Violet felt good with grandfather beside her. She could remember a time when she and her brothers and sister found an abandoned boxcar in the woods and made a home for themselves there. That was before they'd met Grandfather. But now Grandfather took care of them, and they cared for him too. Henry in his 14-year-old big brother way, and Benny always quick to make everyone laugh. Now the boxcar had a home in their backyard. Violet squeezed Grandfather's hand right back, and he smiled at her. Ready for adventure? he asked. Always, she said. So, said Henry, as the plane taxied toward the airport, where are we? Grandfather chuckled. (laughs) I'm going to let you guess. He led the way through the airport and onto a bus. Half an hour later, Benny was kneeling on his seat, looking out the window. All the windows of shops and restaurants and offices in this city are painted with cows and horses and cowboy hats and boots. He pointed to a revolving door in a tall building. Look at that. It's painted like old-time western saloon doors. Grandfather pulled on the cord to let the driver know they were getting off the bus. Violet pointed to another painted window. Look, it says, Welcome to Cowtown. Is there really a city with that name? Henry shook his head. I think we're in the city of Calgary. Grandfather, you told us about it when you were telling us about your friend Judy. It's also called Cowtown, you said. And my guess is that it's stampede time, right? Grandfather smiled wide. You're right, Henry. Cowtown, Calgary, it is. Benny was frowning. What's a stampede? He asked. Isn't that when everybody rushes around and somebody gets knocked over? Like this? asked Jessie. She jogged in circles around Benny. Henry and Violet danced around, too. Benny squealed, and Jessie lifted him up and gave him a squiggly, tickling hug. I think Stampede has more to do with horses, said Henry. You know, bucking broncos and roping calves and riding bulls like cowboys. That's called a rodeo, added Jessie. Right, said Henry. Grandfather spoke up. The rodeo is one part of the stampede. The stampede includes all sorts of events, from art exhibits to dog shows. We're going to have a great time. They'd come to a building with a sign that said Glenbow Museum. A woman was standing in front. She had a huge smile on her face and bright red hair that sat in a pile atop her head. Our Calgary Stampede is called the greatest outdoor show on earth, she said in a deep, rich voice. She must have overheard them. She put out her hand. I'm your grandfather's friend, Judy Simon. She shook each of the Aldens' hands and chuckled. I thought it was about time that your grandfather brought you to our province of Alberta. In Canada, a province is like a state, Jessie explained to her siblings. I'm so excited you're all finally here, Judy said, especially for stampede time. Every July, we open our city to the world for 10 days. It's a giant party. We have cowboys from all over North America. We have chuck wagon races and young people exhibiting animals they've raised. We have a marvelous midway fair with rides and food. And she noticed Benny's eyes widen. Oh, did I mention food? Judy laughed. (laughs) You'll find some very strange foods at the stampede. Benny opened his mouth to ask her about the strange food, but she was already leading them into the museum. I want to show you something on the second floor, Judy said, heading to a wide staircase. And I want you to meet my niece, Daisy, who's joining us. I have a surprise for her. On the second floor were two large signs with arrows pointing in opposite directions. One read, Picturing the Northwest, 